I think what I love about teaching is the unknown. I come from a family of, of teachers, uncles, aunts, brothers, father, mother. <laughs> it goes on, there's a long list, and the, the idea of being an educator just always seemed to be part of my day-to-day -day existence. What really struck me the first day was just how passionate he was about his role in the classroom, his role as an engineer, and he really just brought that energy in, and it made me really excited for the class. I want to focus on face-to-face -face engagement. I want to focus on getting people to maybe even shun some technological options in favor of talking to me and asking a question and having the courage to put their hand up in front of a hundred of their peers and admit ignorance and, and, and be persistent about it. When you witness somebody in class kind of accept the fact that, geez, you know, I know how to do something I didn't know how to do two months ago or even last week, you kind of see that, that potential show up in somebody's eyes and I think that's really, really exciting. His dynamic lectures and his overall excitement for the field of engineering is absolutely motivating and I think any student would agree if you have a teacher who's excited about what they teach, it's so much easier to learn the material. We've moved off of some of the traditional ways we deliver tutorial periods as an example where we create a venue for um, student-driven learning when students are working in teams on rather difficult problems. And our teaching assistants, instead of you know, providing everything to them, are there to facilitate. And the onus becomes on the student groups to execute the work on, again, on quite difficult problems within a finite period of time. We're trying to create these real-world, you know, time-limited scenarios where they need to execute you know, on what, they have, what they've learned in the lecture hall. My research program has always been more focused, I guess, towards commercialization activity than to what some might categorize as more classic academic curiosity-driven research. And I've always maintained, you know, most of my projects are industrially funded um, with small, medium-sized enterprises, and we try and fill critical gaps. So we provide human resources or computational expertise or theoretical expertise where they can't afford to hire. And, you know, we deliver that. The way we've structured the research group right now is that I've brought in 12, 15 years of wave energy expertise. Uh, my colleague, Dr. Crawford, brings in expertise in offshore wind and tidal, and we've kind of brought all of the outputs of our programs together. And now we try and address the marine energy space as a whole. So we don't need to differentiate between whether it's a wave energy developer or an offshore wind developer. The problems that they face, in general, boil down to the same fundamental issues, and we can go after those collectively by bringing all of our expertise together. He is definitely one of those profs that really stands out, that you remember for a long time, and who really inspires his students.